built a shoe factory, which stood on originally on Freeman Street, it was originally named Bostock, and was founded in the 18th century by Thomas Bostock, a local cobbler. His sons started their own factories nearby. In 1901, this building sadly burned down, but in 1903, it was rebuilt on Fenton Road. Every year, a, cer a ceremony took place at the factory to honour their bravery and poppies were laid in memory of them, a tradition that we are all we are proud to continue. In 1919, shortly after World War I, the factories amalgamated to become Lotus. 1998, the Sandon factory was sadly demolished and made way for housing. The valuable memorial plaques were moved to be treasured to the future generations. We are especially honoured in our academy to be the keepers of these memorial plaques, which were dedicated to the memory of the men who worked at the Lotus Shoe Factory who lost their lives in two world wars. Remembrance is a time where we remember members of the armed forces who have died in the line of duty, as well as all those who have been involved with and affected by war and conflict. Our service is a special way of celebrating their bravery and thinking of a future peace. We will start with it with the national anthem. <laughs> Remembrance the more proper memories, the month where we particularly remember the men and women who gave their lives in the time of the war. We remember them in November because it was November Day when the Great War of the 20th century came to an end. When the war was over, some people just wanted to forget all about it because so many people had lost their, lost their lives or were hurt. Because, but because so many people were in the world, Others thought it should be remembered, so remembrance events came out. The First World War was fought in Europe between 1914 and 1918, when nearly a whole generation of young men were killed. By the end of the last days of their offensive, the, Germans, the German forces were exhausted and running out of food supplies. On November 11, 1918, they requested a armistice. An armistice is when both sides agree to stop fighting while a peace treaty is negotiated. When both sides agree to stop fighting while a peace treaty is negotiated, the Allies agreed to the armistice at, and at 11 a.m. on November the 11th, 1918, the world fighting in World War I came to an end. The guns were finally steel and a great silence came down over the battlefield. This is known as a remembrance day, day, a day of peace. There was and there was, they hope for everlasting peace in the world. Sadly, on September 1st, 1939, German forces invaded Poland. On September 3rd, Britain, France, Australia and New Zealand declared war in Germany. The Second World War lasted until 1945. Between August and September 1940, an important battle was fought in the skies over Britain. The Battle of Britain was not only the key turning point in World War II, but also the most important battle in the history of warfare. No battle before or since held so much importance. After the battle, the Prime Minister of the time, Winston Churchill, made a 
historic speech thanking all those young men and women who fought for the, in the battle. The gratitude of every home in our island, in our empire, and indeed throughout the world, except in the abodes of the guilty, goes out to the British airmen who, undaunted by odds, unwearied in their constant challenge and mortal danger, are turning the tide of the world war by their prowess and by their devotion. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. On 8th of May 1945, Victory in Europe Day was one that remained in the memory of all those who witnessed it. It meant an end to nearly six years of war that had cost the lives of millions, had destroyed homes, families and cities, and had brought huge suffering and privations to the populations of entire countries. Millions of people rejoiced in the news that Germany had surrendered, relieved that the intense strain of total wars was finally over. In towns and cities across the world, People mark the victory with street parties dancing and singing. But it was not the end of the conflict, nor was it the end to the impact the war had on people. The war against Japan did not end until August 1945, and the political, social, and economic repercussions of the Second World War felt long after Germany and Japan surrendered. Despite a national lockdown, the country held a VE Day, which was celebrated by thousands of people in the UK with socially distant street parties and lots of singing of popular songs from the era. It is 101 years since the official end of World War I, and the Treaty of Versailles was agreed to and signed by those involved in the First World War. The Treaty of Versailles was signed between the Allied Powers and Germany. 100 years ago in June, World War I officially ended with the singing of the Treaty of Versailles. Whenever, internationally or not, the Paris Treaty was signed June 28, 1919, five years to the day after the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, which sparked the beginning of the war. The treaty forced Germany to accept the responsibility for causing all the loss and damage of the war. Germany was forced to disarm, give up land to France and pay compensation of 132 billion marks. As part of the Paris Peace Conference, an organisation called the League of Nations was formed. The League of Nations was formed in an effort to establish world peace. Its member countries hoped to prevent wars by helping settle disputes between countries. The League was also aimed to establish fair labour conditions, improve global health, control the global arms trade and protect minorities in Europe. The League was officially founded by the Treaty of Versailles and had 42 founding member countries. There are many different ways we could express our thanks and hope for everlasting peace. At John Wilder, we enjoy inviting special visitors into school to reflect at this very special time, although we can't do th that this year, unfortunately. On many houses in Stafford, there is a plaque to commemorate a soldier who died in the war. Some streets have as many as 10 plaques. A fund was started by Earl Haig to collect money to help those who had been injured in battle. Everyone who gives the fund is given a red poppy. These now take many forms. During the war, a service doctor, John McRae, wrote a poem called In Flanders Fields. He wrote this poem about ex his experience with injured soldiers in World War I. Of the fallen soldiers and remind us that they have sacrificed their lives so we can live in peace today.
look and now we lie in planted fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. Some of the bloodiest fighting of World War I took place in Flanders, Picardy, regions of Belgium and northern France. The poppy was the only thing which grew in the aftermath of the devastation. John McCrae was deeply inspired and moved by what he saw. It seems a miracle that no chaos of the First World War that battlefields could produce such beauty and symmetry. So thus, the poppies were adopted as the symbol for remembrance and a symbol of peace. Buying a poppy not only helps who suffer from wounds received in the two world war, but also helps those who have been hurt in war since. Relatives who are also in need through the loss of families and loved ones serving in the armed forces also received help. Although we wear poppies in remembrance of those who gave their lives so we could live in peace, it is also a symbol of hope. Think of those soldiers who are fighting for us now to work for a better future, a more peaceful future. Let us turn our thoughts for a moment to many countries who are not facing peace but in conflict. Many service men and women from Great Britain are currently in post in countries at war. Many of our friends and staff and pupils at school have families who are serving service men and women and we offer all armed service personnel our gratitude for the work that they do. After the First World War, representatives from the Royal British Legion worked with the government to create a National Day of Remembrance and in 1919 the first Remembrance Day took place. The annual Remembrance Sunday commemoration takes place on the closest Sunday to, to 11th of November. In 1919, one year after the armistice, the Cenotaph was commissioned in Whitehall, London by the Prime Minister at the time, Lord George, and designed by Sir Edwin Lutyen. The Cenotaph is a large pillar of white stone close to the Houses of Parliament. Because many people who died in the war lie buried far away, it, it is a mem memorial to the dead, so relatives didn't need to travel to graves to remember. It wasn't intended to be a permanent structure, but over a hundred years later, it is still a significant piece in our history. An active ceremony takes place at the Serta. The Queen, the leaders of the country and armed forces lay down wreaths of red poppies at the foot of the Senator each Remembrance Day. So do many members of the public. Elsewhere in towns and villages all over the country, wreaths of poppies are laid in memory of all those who have died in the war. Let us think of those around the world who are victims of war. The innocent being devastated through war, we remember those less fortunate than ourselves who spend each day living and hoping for a better life. Let us find all ways of making a better life for those who suffer from the effects of war. So so shall be grateful for their own lives and to remember that even with all of the troubles in the world, we all have so much to be thankful for. Father God, thank you for the service and women or, and members of the Lotus Shoe Factory who gave their lives for our country and for our freedom. We thank you for all of the serving members of the armed forces who continue to fight for freedom and justice for all. We hope that in all other countries swords will be turned to handshakes and peace will be found, bringing less pain and sorrow and a brighter future around the world. Remember the families and friends of those affected by war, both past and present. 
Send them hope so they can remain strong and gain future peace at home. But most of all, we pray for hope. Hope that one day we can learn to live with and respect others so that we all might live in peace. Amen. 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 At an act of Remembrance Day, a number of things can take place. Poems can be read, so can be names or letters or anything to help us remember. At 11 o'clock on Remembrance Day, there is a two minute silence. Ours is not a silent word, that there is no noise. There is noise all around us, so silent is special. Silent is good for remembering. It helps us to stop thinking about what is what is going on right now or what we are doing to do, what we are, what we are going to do. years now a two minute silence has been a chance for us to reflect about the people affected by war and is rooted in a traditional hope that the future will be peaceful. At Acts of Remembrance the last voice is either, either a bugle or trumpet used at ceremonies commemorating those who have been killed in war. There is a played as final farewell symbolising the fact that the duty of the dead soldier is over and that they can rest in peace. Following the last post, we will be holding our two minute silence. The ceremonial use of the last post is followed by the rouse, which will be used to signal the end of our silence. <laughs> No. 
We hope it helps you to remember um, the people who made um, so many sacrifices. Watching our online remembrance service. We hope you enjoyed it. Take care and we hope we will see you soon.